Hi everybody! This week we're going to be talking about sunscreens, specifically 10 different sunscreens that I've been trying and using all summer long. I'm going to give you my overall thoughts. We're going to break each one down by price point, whether it's a mineral or chemical sunscreen. If that sounds interesting to you, let's dive in. We're going to begin with mineral sunscreens. I have five mineral sunscreens that I've been using all summer long. And we're going to start with the lowest price per ounce, which is Alta MD. This is their UV Facial Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Plus. This is the least expensive mineral sunscreen that I've tried this summer. It is $30 for four ounces, which breaks down to $7.50 an ounce. And it looks like I haven't used it at all, but I promise that I have been using it because every time you take a little bit out, it kind of morphs back into shape. So the next day when you open the jar, it looks like it's untouched. This particular sunscreen is an SPF 30 plus, and it has both zinc oxide, which is a mineral sunscreen, and octanoxate, which is actually a chemical filter. The two combine to give you broad spectrum coverage. And the formula resides in a petrolatum and dimethicone base. So it has a little bit of silicone feel, but also a very occlusive petrolatum feel. It also has hyaluronic acid to temporarily dry in moisture and plump up the skin and vitamin E. And it takes quite a bit of effort to rub into the skin. So I'm just going to rub a little bit on my hand and leaves a little bit of a white cast. On the pro side, however, um, it does not feel greasy at all on the skin. You forget you're wearing it after a few minutes after it's absorbed. Also, another con is the smell. It does have a medicinal kind of a smell to it. They don't add any additional fragrance, so it is fragrance free, but that does not mean that it's completely free of any kind of smell. I didn't reach for this quite as often as some other mineral sunscreens that we'll get to in a second, mostly because of the white cast, and also it doesn't play well with facial hair. It kind of gets uh, stuck in the scruff, but on a freshly shaven face, it does work well, and I would recommend it. Next up under the mineral sunscreen category is the Mad Hippie Facial SPF. This is a 30 plus, um, providing broad spectrum coverage. It does say to shake well, so I'm gonna shake it up. This is entirely zinc oxide. No other filters, it relies just on the 16% zinc oxide. This is a base that includes more oils and more natural extracts. It has aloe leaf juice, shea butter, orange oil, carrot seed oil, glycerin, avocado oil, as well as sodium ascorbyl phosphate, which is a derivative of vitamin C. I really like the antioxidant benefits that they, they included in this sunscreen. The, the downside is, again, the white cast is pretty severe. With, In fact, I found in order to use this sunscreen and be out in public, I needed to use some sort of a color corrector or some sort of a anything that tints to kind of give it give it a little camouflage because just the sunscreen by itself does leave quite a ghostly appearance. On the plus side, because of those natural extracts and oils, there is a pleasant smell to this sunscreen. It does not smell like a sunscreen. It smells more like, I think between the aloe and the carrot, it has more of a kind of walking through a garden smell to it. I wanted to enjoy this more, but I, again, I could only use it on a freshly shaven face because it does get stuck in scruff. This retails for $25 for two ounces, making it $12.50 an ounce. My third mineral sunscreen that I've been using this summer is the Kinship Self Reflect. This is an SPF of 32 and again uses only one filter, zinc oxide, to provide broad spectrum coverage. There's also glycerin, aloe leaf juice, lactobacillus ferment, which is a helpful ingredient for the microbiome, turmeric, and licorice root. It is tinted, a fairly dark tint. You'll see in the application video, that's, that's the color of the tint. And this is actually the sunscreen that I've applied this morning. So I'm just gonna reapply a little bit. The downside is it's definitely greasy feeling. It leaves you just with that kind of like wet, greasy um, feel on your face, just always there until I wash this off tonight. I'll feel it on my face which I don't really enjoy. I don't know if anyone really enjoys. They don't add any fragrance, but again, those natural extracts, I think, just give it a, a masking scent so you don't smell the zinc. This retails for $25 for 1.75 ounces, making it $14.29 an ounce. 
The fourth mineral sunscreen I've been using is the MD Solar Sciences. This is their mineral tinted cream SPF 30. This uses both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide filters. Blends in really well. Um, it's not as greasy as the Kinship in my experience. Um, it's a little, little more lightweight feel to it. It's in a dimethicone base and also has green tea, vitamin E, and also tetrahexyldecyl ascorbate, which is another derivative of vitamin C. Um, anytime you can get a sunscreen that also has antioxidant coverage, you're, you're making your sunscreen even more effective against um, sun damage, that UV damage, the free radicals, all those things that dermatologists tell you to um, try and protect yourself from. And the smell isn't particularly noticeable at all. It is, it is, um, it is fragrance free, but it also doesn't smell like it's medicinal. And the final mineral sunscreen for this video is the La Roche Posay. This is the Anthelios Light Fluid Sunscreen. And this one has a little like weighted paintball thing inside, so it, when you shake it up, you can hear it kind of rattle around in there. This uses both titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, so again, those two mineral filters. And unlike some of the others, instead of using dimethicone or some of those other silicones, it uses something called undecane, which is an alternative to a silicone. And the light fluid sunscreen um, name is very appropriate because when you apply it, it just kind of drizzles out, more like a milky texture. And out of all the mineral sunscreens, if I don't want a white cast, um, I think this does the best blending in. And also it is the only mineral sunscreen that you can use um, with scruff, with any kind of facial beard growth. You can blend right into the, the facial hairs and it, it doesn't stick. It is, however, the most expensive of the bunch. Um, at $37 for 1.7 ounces, that makes it $21.76 per ounce. I should also mention that this particular sunscreen does have a smell that's unpleasant. Um, it smells a little bit like paint to me for some reason. So it kind of sounds like paint and smells like paint. All right, moving on to chemical sunscreens. These are all sunscreens with various UV chemical filters. This is the Biore Water Gel SPF 50, PA++++. This is about $12 for 90 milliliters or $4 an ounce. This is a Japanese sunscreen, so it has Japanese filters that you can't find in US made sunscreens. It is a very watery consistency. Um, and the big deal breaker for a lot of people using this particular sunscreen is alcohol. It smells like alcohol. There is a high alcohol content um, in this formula. But the chemical filters used in this sunscreen are Juvenal A and Juvenal T, which are two newer, innovative uh, sunscreen filters uh, not available in sunscreens in the U.S. And also Octinoxate which is a sunscreen filter you can find in many US-based sunscreens. It's extremely lightweight, um, extremely fast absorbing because of that high alcohol content, and you don't notice that you're wearing sunscreen as you wear it throughout the day. So on those exceptionally hot days, this is what I reach for because of that extreme lightweight consistency. Moving on, the uh, second chemical sunscreen I've been trying is the Misha Sun SPF 45 PA++ Essence. This one I've really enjoyed um, to apply and, and it absorbs so easily and it doesn't have any alcohol content. I wish I could show you, but I think I've used my last drop. Let me see. If, oh, I can't get a little bit out. There it is. It's such a nice formula. It does have a little bit of dimethicone, so it has some silicone in it and added fragrance, so if you're you know, sensitive and don't want any fragrance in your products. But the, the fragrance is delightful. It masks any kind of that sunscreen smell, um, and it just smells very pleasant. The filters used are Oxinoxate, uh, Juvenal A, and Tinazorb S. It really has a nice matte finish. It doesn't look like you're wearing sunscreen or anything greasy at all. It's just a very effective, uh, very pleasant to use sunscreen. This you can find for about $8 for 50 milliliters. That's $4.71 an ounce. And from La Roche-Posay, um, this is a chemical sunscreen by them. This is their 100 broad spectrum Anthelios Melt in Milk sunscreen. 
This has four different UV filters, um, avabenzone, homosalate, oct octosalate, and octocrylene. This is also a water resistant sunscreen, so on days that I know I'm going to be uh, in the pool or just around water, um, this is what I reach for. It is also an SPF 100, so it's the strongest sunscreen um, that I have. So anytime uh, there's a beach day or days that you know you just can't avoid any kind of sun exposure, it's a good choice. It's, it's obviously going to be thicker um, than some of the other lighter SPFs. Um, the melt-in milk, yeah, it does melt in eventually. And... Um, and because it's using those chemical filters and, and not a mineral filter, it does absorb eventually and, and rub completely in, so you're not going to get a white cast. It doesn't smell fantastic. Um, it, it does have like a, a sunscreen smell to it, but it's not nearly as bizarre smelling as their mineral sunscreen was. This is $25 for three ounces or $8.33 an ounce. Moving on to a Korean sunscreen, this is The Lab Oligo Hyaluronic Acid Sun Essence. I ordered this because Ben Neely, who you might also know um, from YouTube and TikTok, uh, he has been living in South Korea for a few months now, and you can just walk into you know any store in, in South Korea and find a wide selection of sunscreens, and he just picked this one somewhat randomly, and he said he really enjoyed it. It's a little more expensive than some of the other Korean sunscreens, um, probably because it might be a smaller company. I don't know. It was $25 for 40 milliliters or $17.85 an ounce. But the formula is very enjoyable. It also uses the chemical filters Juvenal A and Tinosorb S. Uh, glycerin again, which is a humectant, and hyaluronic acid, which does a very similar job of drawing in moisture from the air and giving you a lot of hydration. And it's just a nice, smooth easy to apply formula. It's very similar to the Misha. It just applies effortlessly and uh, leaves just a little bit of a glow, which I, I like. I like to have a little bit of a glow. I wish it was a little easier to get your hands on this. Um, you have to order it from Korea and you have to have it shipped. Um, but it's, it's a very, very nice sunscreen. I wish we had more like it here in the U.S. And the final sunscreen for this video is the Murad Anti-Aging Moisturizer Broad Spectrum SPF 30 PA++++. This I talked about in my Murad video. I'll have that linked in the description box below if you're interested. Um, it is a very nice sunscreen. It has an exceptionally nice absorbing formula. It has US approved filters, avabenzone, homosalate, octanoxate, and octosalate. And I have to say, um, anytime I use a sunscreen with avabenzone in it, normally I get like my eyes just get kind of burny and irritated. This is the only sunscreen with avabenzone that I can use and not have to worry about that burny feeling around the eyes if it gets too close to your eyes. Uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't have that effect. I'm not sure what they did with the formula to make it not do that, but it's, it's unique in that aspect. It is, however, extremely expensive. It is $50 for a 1.7 ounce which is $29.41 an ounce, which is a lot. I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat it. Uh, they are overcharging, in my opinion, for something that should be considered uh, an essential. Having access to sunscreen that works well um, is not a luxury, so it does not deserve a luxury price point. And there you have it, all of the chemical and mineral sunscreens that I've been using throughout the summer. All right, what are your thoughts? Leave your comments below. If you have any sunscreen recommendations that I didn't include in this video that you've been using and have been enjoying, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at 43-year-old-skinfluencer. And I'll see you next time.